I'm an engineer. I graduated from Bombay and I did my doctorate at Berkeley and I've worked in utilities. I've consulted uh, with utilities, including the TVA. And I, I don't let my heart lead my numbers. My slogan in my professional work is numbers first. So uh, two and a half years ago, I started uh, uh, study, not thinking actually that you could get rid of fossil fuels and nuclear power at the same time. I always tell people, I'm very pro-utility. If you've ever been in a country where the lights don't come on when you flip the switch, you understand the value of the electricity system we have. But we do need to do things differently because we agree we need to get rid of fossil fuels. I don't want 20% coal. I have set forth a course in my book, Carbon Free, Nuclear Free, that can get rid of nuclear power and fossil fuels not overnight, not in 10 years, but in 40 years. I think in, in the electricity sector, it can actually be done in 30 years. We're not talking about existing nuclear power plants and shutting them off overnight. I understand that nuclear power supplies 20% of our electricity in some parts of the country, like Illinois and South Carolina, it's a lot more. Those plants uh, can be phased out as they reach the end of their uh, license lives. I'm talking about new nuclear power plants. Do new nuclear power plants make sense? We've got three different energy problems. We've got a climate-related fossil fuel problem. We've got an energy security problem related to oil. And we've got a nuclear proliferation problem that's not 100% related to nuclear power, but that definitely has an overlap with nuclear power. If you read the headlines over the period of two weeks, you will read about the enrichment plant in Iran. The days in which the United States could say, do as I say and not as I do, are over. Fortunately, we have a president-elect who understands that and who has said new nuclear power plants during his campaign, new nuclear power plants may be considered after we've solved the nuclear waste and nuclear proliferation problem. I'm paraphrasing. France has not solved the nuclear waste problem. I've studied the French nuclear waste problem. I've debated nuclear power in France in French. You can find a 250-page report on their waste problem uh, in, on our website, ier.org. France reprocesses its spent fuel, not all of it. They're actually accumulating surplus spent fuel at a rate that is going to likely require them to build a new spent fuel storage facility at the cost of hundreds of millions of dollars. They reuse 1% of the spent fuel that's plutonium. They pay two cents a kilowatt hour more for it. Their radioactive waste, high level radioactive waste is accumulating in the Normandy Peninsula. Most of their waste uranium is accumulating in France. Most, most of their, and they discharge 100 million gallons of radioactive waste every year into the English Channel to the latest data that are available. They've polluted the oceans all the way to the Arctic to the point that 12 of 15 Western European countries have said, stop, and the French will not do it. They're still discharging radioactive waste into the ocean. But all said and done, the climate crisis is so severe that one would say, if nuclear power were really cheap, there would be a case for it. But the fact is, nuclear power is very expensive, and it is very risky. And those, especially in the time that we're in today, no utility executive even wants to build a nuclear power plant without federal loan guarantees. If nuclear power were as attractive as Dr. Moore says, Wall Street should be lining up to finance nuclear power. Here's what Jeffrey Immel, who runs GE, that wants to sell nuclear power plants, said what he would do if he were running a utility. He told this to the Financial Times in November 2007. Quote, if you were a utility CEO and looked at your world today, you would just do gas and wind. You would say they are easier to cite, digestible today, and I don't have to bet my company on any of this stuff. You would never do nuclear. The economics are overwhelming. The fact is that wind energy is cheaper today than nuclear. Concentrating solar power is about the same as nuclear. 
And those costs are coming down in contrast to nuclear power plants, which are going up. Many of the new nuclear proposals in this country are so costly that they would cost more than the capitalization of the companies that are proposing them. That is why they're lining up in Washington for 100% loan guarantees. And remember, the Wall Street that financed subprime mortgages as securities thought nuclear power plants were too risky. Now, this problem of intermittency. We are today at 1% wind. Last year, we added 5,000 megawatts of wind in this country. This year, we are on course to add about 7,500 megawatts. That's the equivalent of about two and a half nuclear power plants. It's not seven and a half nuclear power plants, two and a half nuclear power plants. But that's two and a half more than nuclear power plants that were built. That can be escalated to four. The leaders of the nuclear industry at a conference of the, sponsored by the Bulletin in Chicago said, at most they could build four to eight nuclear power plants in the next 10 years. And it would be closer to four probably than to eight. We should be doing that much every year in wind energy, and the capacity to do it is here. What do you do when the sun doesn't shine and the wind doesn't blow? Well, the first thing that we haven't done yet, and that is most obvious, is you coordinate the sun and the wind. Because the wind very often, for instance, in West Texas blows at night, and the sun, by definition, shines in the daytime. The second thing is in the first stage, you, you do use natural gas for backup. But you don't need to build new natural gas power plants in most cases, contrary to what Dr. Moore has told you. Because so many natural gas power plants were built in this country that in 2006, assuming that natural gas will always stay very cheap, that in 2006, the capacity factor of natural gas power plants was only 18.6%. Those natural gas power plants and our existing hydro can be used to back up when the wind isn't blowing and the sun isn't shining. First, we need something called a smart grid, and I'll give you two <coughs> examples of what that means. Today, nuclear power plants are part of a 100-year-old grid concept. It's like doing business with IBM mainframes and punch cards. We have the electronics and software in the age of internet laptops and software. We need to build a smart grid. What do I mean? When the sun is shining, you can store the heat in molten salt. Arizona Public Service is building a plant that will be as economical or cheaper than nuclear. Today, 280 megawatts in Arizona, and they will be storing heat in molten salt, and on summer days, they will generate electricity 90% of the time. What do you do with wind energy? Often blows at night when you don't need it most. Well, there's a company called Ice Energy that's commercial today that connects its ice maker to a central air conditioner, and you can actually get a central air conditioner from carrier and train that plugs into this ice maker. When the wind is blowing, you connect your wind turbine with a laptop and software to your ice maker. You make ice, and in the daytime, you get your air conditioning from the ice. Those who say that you cannot overcome intermittency of sun and wind are lacking two things, a study of the literature and imagination. In, in the Netherlands, let me give you an example of imagination. In the Netherlands, an experiment has just been concluded that would connect wind energy to food storage warehouses. You lower the temperature of the food storage warehouse when the wind is blowing, and you cut off the freezer electricity during the daytime at peak. Now you have stored wind energy in frozen meat. If we go to a smart grid, I have absolutely no doubt that we can make a reliable, and I, can, I have never in 37 years of work on energy, and I did, the, I was the principal author of the first efficiency study that was ever done in 1971, two years before the first energy crisis. I was here during the first energy crisis. I have never before said renewables and efficiency and storage can solve the problem. But having studied the technology recently, I know a lot of people believe like Dr. Moore, and they believe very sincerely. A lot of very fine people have said, we need nuclear. We cannot do without nuclear. But I put it to you that they have not really looked at the literature. And as a final word, I would say, the last time nuclear power plants were sought to be built in the name of energy independence and saving us from an energy crisis was in the 1970s. Every single power plant that was ordered 
at that time was cancelled, more than 100. Thank you.